It is a hot day down here at the shop in Elizabeth City. And for some reason, I'm wearing a black t-shirt and jeans. But anyway, today we're going to be talking about power. Specifically, we're going to be talking about solar power. Renogy was nice enough to send these 400 watt solar panels to me to evaluate and do a review on. It's a nice sunny day here in Elizabeth City, so we're going to break them out and get busy. Got the panel set up out here in Jason's yard at the shop in East City, which has no shortage of Jeeps parked in the yard. Let's take a look at the power station that we have it hooked up to and see what we got going on. So this is a anchor station. It's presently at 33%. I had it relatively ran down for this test. It's presently drawing, oh, about 120 watts. It varies back and forth between 120 and about 140. And I know you're probably thinking, what's well, a 400 watt station? Why is it only drawing that much? We don't exactly have ideal lighting conditions. It's sunny, in and out, sunny, cloudy, sunny, cloudy. So right now we don't have the best lighting conditions, but it's drawing respectable power off these panels, despite the fact that, well, part of it's in the shade. If it doesn't clear up momentarily, I'm probably going to move them out there where it's nice and bright and see what kind of wattage we pull out there. But right now, we're pulling about 130, like I said, which I think is pretty respectable given the lighting conditions that we're in. Watch out, the professor is doing stuff. I always get worried whenever he starts doing things like this. I'm going to leave it alone for a little while and let it charge the power station, let it run. So we'll take a minute or two or even three we'll talk about the specs on the on the panels. We went ahead and moved them over here to a better spot. We just weren't getting good lighting over there. So we got better sunlight. Let's take a look at the power station and see what kind of power we're drawing now. Drawing 156 watts, which is pretty good for later in the day sunlight. It is about 430 right now, so we're not getting direct overhead sunlight. So not bad, not bad. Go over some of the specs real quick. So uh, as you can see, they're, they're not small. Uh, length is 118.8 inches by 33.7 inches tall and 8 tenths of an inch thick. And they do weigh, according to the specs on their website, 30.2 pounds. So if any of the snitches from my former employer or workers comp are watching this video, uh, Jason did move the panels for me since lifting 30.2 pounds would be a violation of doctor's orders right now because of my back. If you're interested in the specs, just head over to Renogy's website. They are all on there. They're very, very clearly and plainly put out on the website of course, with reviews also. Real quick, I'll go over some of them though, because who wants to take the time to look stuff up when somebody's nice enough to just tell it to you? So max power rating, like we talked about earlier, is 400 watts. Uh, optima, optimum operating voltage is 40 watts. <clears throat> optimum operating current who wants to take a guess? Three guesses, your first two are wrong, 10 amp. Fuse is 15 amp, operating temperature, 185 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 85 Celsius. That is the ambient temperature. Folded dimensions, we didn't go over that. It's gonna be 27.9 inches by 33.7 inches by 3.2 inches thick. And again, like I said earlier, it is 30.2 pounds. It's got a little heft to it but nothing major. And the panels are rated at IP67 waterproof. I don't know if I believe that or not. Let's find out the hard way. So we're gonna test the IP67 waterproof rating because 
Well, why not? It's a nice hot day and we have a water hose. Professor, you want to do the honors? Let's take a look at the power station, which is safely out of the way. Power is 184 watts and really isn't dropping a whole lot. watts. Now they are glistening wet. We had to cut for a second because of the whooshing hurricane noise in the background. Uh, Jason's place is right next to Coast Guard Air Base Elizabeth City. It's right over there. It's a C-130 taking off. It's kind of loud so we had to cut video for just a second. Okay let's go take a little look at the power station. Yeah, power did drop off a bit. We're down to about 120 watts. So coating it in water did bring the power output down, but it is still putting out power. And apparently they weren't lying to us. It is waterproof. Well, we had to relocate them real quick because the shade was creeping up. Okay, so actually we dropped off to 120 watts, not because of the water on the panels, but because, like I said, the shade was starting to creep up on the panels. So uh, I'm lazy, I'm not gonna walk over there. I'm gonna pull up the Bluetooth app for the power station. So we're actually at 254 watts right now with them still covered in water. So I don't think hitting them with water really had any appreciable effect on the power output. Again, it dropped off because the, the shade is creeping up on it because the sun is heading west. It's uh, 4.45 in the afternoon right now. So I'm confident that if I had been proactive and gotten out here at noon or one o'clock like I probably should have we probably would have been getting easily 300 watts or more output on the panels so it's doing pretty impressively right now considering we hosed them down and uh, left them out there and got a little shade on them if you've watched any of my other gear review videos you'll know that I don't always test my stuff in ideal conditions because when you're out in your campsite odds are you're not going to have ideal conditions so we're out here like I said late in the afternoon with deteriorating lighting conditions the shade is creeping up doused them in water we're still putting out 250 255 watts it will take about four hours to completely charge my power station from where it's at right now which is about 34 percent but if you're in your campsite all day uh, you can just let it sit there and charge. It's eventually going to charge your power station up. And if you are in an open campsite, which I never am, I like to have tree cover for shade. But if you are, it's going to charge a lot faster. It's probably going to charge your power station up two, two and a half hours if you have ideal lighting conditions. But we do not have ideal lighting conditions, and I rarely ever do when I'm out on the trails. Well, it works having the power station plugged into it, and we still have it plugged in. Now I've brought my fridge into the mix, which Jason was kind enough to bring over here. And so now we're doing pass-through charging. We're bringing in 165 watts. We're putting out 45 watts. Well, you can see the shade is creeping in. It's getting later in the day. We're now about 5 o'clock. The shade's creeped over and onto the panels. We're only putting out about 54 watts. But the sun is way back there behind the clouds. Still, not bad at all considering these lighting conditions. I've been out here for a couple of minutes pelting this thing with pine combs because they claim that it's made out of a sturdy fiberglass material that will last you for decades. And I realized pine cone not that tough. But I just need to know that they're not fragile. Not only are they not fragile, they appear to be very well made and sturdy. Um, I realize pine cones are not the best test of something sturdiness, but between being dropped earlier on that foot, which again is just fine, they do appear to be pretty sturdy. Okay, okay, okay. As fun as it is to sit out there and throw pine cones at the panels and plug stuff into them. Got them unplugged now. Got them set up so we can take a look up close at the build quality. Oh, somebody has hard water at their house. So, Renogy does claim 
22.7% efficiency on the panels, on the actual cells in there, which is, I would say, above average as far as industry standard goes. I know somebody is going to watch this and go, oh, no, no, this brand is 23% or this one is whatever. Again, above average for industry standard. I don't know off the top of my head the efficiency ratings of every panels out there but from what i've seen going through various panels and their specs 22.7 percent is pretty darn good taking a look at the back side the stands pretty well made uh, renergy claims 3,000 plus times that they can be open and closed consider that pretty good technical specifications for the panels are right on the back so if you need to know any information on them it's right there wiring passing through to the panels is pretty well done the hinges are solid they're not loose they don't seem flimsy oh my god look at those water stains jason's got to get some water softener out here oh are we living in stone ages yeah they're very well made and they're very sturdy wiring is not bad. Okay, well, let's get down to brass tacks here. Let's talk about practicality as far as the panel size. There they are. Laid out by the Defiant. They're not terribly large. They fold up to a decent size. Would I take them with me? Well, that would depend on what kind of trip I'm going on. So, anybody with a Jeep JK four-door knows how much storage space you have in the back. Apparently, I hit my lock button while I was packing this up. So, in the back right now, you know, I have the fridge that I was just using. My tote that has random crap in it. It's not organized right now because there's all the wires and cables I was using for the video. But space is kind of at a premium. So whether or not I would use these driving a Jeep JK would depend on what kind of trip I was going on. What do I mean by that? I'm glad you asked. If I was going on a longer distance trip that involved breaking down camp every morning and moving, I may want to opt for a smaller set of panels. Just because folded up, they're going to take up a little more room in the Jeep than I want them to. If I'm going on a weekend trip, especially one where I'm not switching campsites and I can leave them out all day, 100%, these are going with me, no questions asked. But again, that's me with that vehicle. If you have more cargo space, particularly if you're a van lifer or you're overlanding in a larger vehicle, oh yeah, totally, take those panels with you. They don't take up much space at all for that. But my vehicle, I might opt for some smaller panels depending on what kind of trip I was going on. But again, that's me. If you're running a Jeep JK or a Jeep JL and you have a different setup, you probably want to use them. If you have a Gladiator or a Tacoma or a Frontier, something like that, or a larger vehicle, these are right up your alley and they will do just well. I can't believe just how bad the water is here at Jason's house. That brings me to another point. You do have to periodically clean your panels. If you're the kind of person that thinks that they can just gather up dirt, mud, dust, and work at peak efficiency, mm -mm. you do have to wipe them down periodically and clean them. And they're going to get clean before they ever get used in the field because they do have dirt on them from today and they do have water stains. Uh, it goes without saying that I do like the panels very much and again not just because Renogy gave them to me and it's compensating me for this video but because they are a very well made good product and i can almost guarantee you will see them in a future video either being carried in the back of that in the back of andy's xterra or in the back of jason's jeep but let's pack them up and see how much space they take up in the jeep This 
isn't really how I would transport them under normal circumstances. Of course, I'd have the back seat down and everything set up for a weekend off-roading and camping or whatever. But that just gives you a little perspective how big they are in the vehicle sitting in the back seat. The panels are all packed up. And let's talk about some parting thoughts. Do I like the panels? I think we've established that. I do. Do I think that they are worth the price? Well, the price being MSRP $9.99, and they are presently on Renogy's website for, I believe, $6.69. Do I think they're worth the price? Yes. I think it's a quality product. I think it's well-made. It does the job that it's advertised and it's claimed to do. It does it very well. Uh, I think that they will suit your needs if you need solar panels in the 400-watt range. I believe you could do a lot worse than to buy Renogy's panels, and that's not just because they're compensating me for this video. Again, if you're seeing this video, that means that they passed testing and I like them. If they didn't, they would get sent back to the manufacturer, like many things have before. If you've liked this video, please go ahead and like it, subscribe to the channel, and consider heading over to patreon.com slash defiantoffroad and subscribing there. I post all my tracks from the trails that I run, waypoints from campsites, early release stuff, behind the scenes pictures, etc., etc. Until next time, this has been Defiant Off-Road.